I wanted to try and raise some awareness on what buckthorn is and why it's such an invasive plant that eventually chokes out and kills everything. And I'll start by explaining how a normal forest typically would work, you know, in an ideal situation, is that you get nice big trees like this one here. Um, this one, this is an old oak that came down a long time ago. Uh, you got a couple oaks, one back there, one right here. What would happen is they would drop acorns or, you know, maple leaves have those little helicopter seeds and stuff. And those would create saplings that over time would come up and they would be the replacement trees that uh, once that that original parent tree dies, you have replacements in the pipeline at every stage. You know, you get saplings, you get medium height ones, you get tall ones, and then you get the really old growth. And that keeps a continual renewal of the forest and the woods, and uh, you don't have to really uh, worry about bringing in trees because the trees just kind of replant themselves. Now, what happens when buckthorn moves in is it's very high germination rate. It's a very prolific plant. It does not need a whole lot of sun, and it also grows very fast. It will choke out pretty much everything. And what I mean by that, when it chokes it out, it will grow so quick that it gets above the other oaks and saplings uh, faster so that it creates a canopy that shades them and they don't get any sun. They don't get sun, well, they don't grow, and eventually they will just die. They don't get the nutrients they need and the, the sunlight. And you, you kind of kill off that pipeline of renewal of the new trees coming in and that the new tree uh, growth that's happening eventually will just wither away and be gone. And what happens after that is buckthorn has no competitors, there's nothing else there and it just grows uncontested. Now I've kind of hinted at why buckthorn is so bad as it chokes everything else out, but to add to that to make it worse is it will come back year after year after year. It's a continual battle of trying to get rid of this tree and the reason is is those berries and then i said the the seeds that drop onto the ground they can stay in the ground for half a dozen years or more uh, under the right conditions and so you might pull everything out this year and next year you got to do it again you know you're going to have little saplings on the ground just like these guys here that's a buckthorn right there this is a buckthorn all of that is they're going to come back next year because the seeds that are in the ground that you can't get to are just going to germinate it's an uphill battle. You're going to have to do this over and over and over. So one way to identify buckthorn, and you can do it from a distance, is just look for the little offshoots of thorns that come off the branches like this. You know, they'll be everywhere. And the thorn part, the top, will eventually break off. You can see that they just kind of dry out and break off. But you'll be able to see branches like this from a distance. And there's some more thorns and just noted that that's a buckthorn. Um, it's not prickly ash because it's a lot bigger. You know, the thorn is a much longer thorn than any kind of prickly ash would be, or uh, like a rose, rose bush thorn or something. But that's one way to identify it. So by far my favorite way to tell what tree is a buckthorn, or bush if it's big enough, um, is just come in and scratch the bark. You know, you just take a knife and put a little mark in there and if it's orange like this and has fibers, like you can see the fibers on the, the knife, then it's definitely buckthorn. Here's a trunk from a really old buckthorn. This one, I counted the rings and it's anywhere from 22 to 24 years, depending on what you consider a ring. But it's extremely old and large and you can tell that it's kind of got an orange tint to it. So that orange doesn't just stop at the bark, it goes all the way through the tree. It's just that first, outer layer, if I can get this in the shade correctly, that outer layer is the only one that's going to be kind of a white color. You can see it all the way around here and on this side a little bit, it's kind of lighter colored. And so when you scratch through the bark and you hit that white, that's what you're hitting is this new growth layer. And if you keep going, the inner layer is all going to be orange. And this is the leaf pattern on buckthorn. It's pretty, pretty easy to spot. It's a very dark green. It's also the first plant to leaf out, and it's the last plant to lose its leaves uh, in the spring and in the fall. So it's easy to identify that way as well. Once you know what the leaves look like, you can start to spot these things from a distance, like in the car, driving down the road, you can just start to see it in the ditches or in people's yards. To get rid of buckthorn, it's actually pretty easy when they're small. Their roots don't go very deep, and they hang on. Their roots don't break off, so you can just grab them and just pull them out of the ground. Normally I use two hands, I'm trying to just one-handed. But you can see here that 
pulling up that one plant, it took all the roots with it. Now that plant's dead. It'll never come back. And so when they're small like this, you can just come through and pretty easily pull them up. And unfortunately, that's the best way to get rid of them because they will come back if you just cut them off. They will sprout again. And with pulling these guys up, you can usually pull up a pretty big one because their roots don't go very deep, which is actually a saving grace. So you don't need to cut them all down. Like when they're this big, you could just cut it down and treat it if you wanted to, or you can try and pull it up. I'm going to try and pull this one up. So you can see how shallow their roots really are. You know, they don't go down very far. And if a couple of them break off like this one broke off, that's fine. That ain't gonna come back. You wanna get the bulk of it, which this is. And then you know that tree is gone, not coming back. You don't have to treat it, no chemicals. Here's a buckthorn that died. It just, you know, didn't, didn't live in top, on the top side, but it sprouted from the bottom. You know, everything sprouted out of the the trunk down here at the very back side bottom of this trunk and that same thing will happen if you cut this off you just chop it off here and wait till next year you'll have all new growth like this growing out of the the trunk here's a perfect example of that this one was cut down to the ground this is the stump right here and these are all new growth coming out of that stump you can see on the back side here this one here this is all offshoots from that trunk so you can't just cut them down you can't just come through with a brush saw and you can't just you know have goats come in and eat them because they will come back they'll just have brand new growth just like this and then you'll be fighting the same battle the next year the best way to get rid of them if they're big like these ones are these ones were pretty big and I'm gonna do this to a lot more in this this area is drill a couple holes you can see there's four holes there four holes there and then treat them with some uh, glyphosate I think it's called and this is blue just so that I know I've already treated it I've already marked it but you just spray that down into the holes and it will take care of them you need a really high percentage like 18 20 percent or more um, I know they make 40 percent concentrated bottles uh, just fill those four holes up and it will kill the plant I do want to mention something about chemical treating them with that though it does kill this this plant and keeping it just on top of the stump will help minimize affecting surrounding areas but you also want to be cognizant of bees the glyphosate will harm bees it kills the gut bacteria and the bee and then the bee dies so just be cognizant of where you're spraying it the bees need to come in contact with it so just spraying it into the air not necessarily going to harm the bees but if the bees you know Go on a flower that you sprayed or a, a plant, leaves and stuff like that, just be aware of it. Here's a really good example of one that I treated a little while ago that had the offshoots. Normally I break the offshoots off, but I left them on just to see if it would actually die. And yeah, you can see the chemical treatment got into the wood there, got into the new sprouts and killed them. So chemicals work as intended. Now most of this is cleared out. There's still a lot of brush underneath here on the ground, little stuff that needs to be pulled up, but a lot of the big stuff is cut down now. There's a stump that's treated. Here's another one. And you can see how much more light gets to the ground versus back there to right here. You know, it's cloudy now compared to earlier when the sun was out, but you can just see the difference in deeper into the woods versus right up front here where there are no leaves to block the sunlight and the canopy of the buckthorn is gone and this will allow all the new saplings and growth to come up. Here's an example of the saplings I'm talking about that would get choked out. These are some oak trees that are coming in, you know, three of them and these would get choked out because they'd just get uh, too shaded and there'd be no sun for them to grow and so the buckthorn would beat them to the top of the canopy and eventually they wouldn't have enough sun and they'd just die out. Well, they die out and then now you just don't have any replacement trees. Here's another example of, you know, pine or cedar, 
whatever's coming up here, this guy would also get choked out. You know, he'd just have no way to compete with the growth speed of the buckthorn and this guy would have died.